and I think I think now more and more people are waking up to the fact that the world is falling apart. I, I, and I see it even within the community that knows how dire the situation is. Uh, one thing I'd ask both of you is, don't you feel like now these past couple months seem it seems like it's been more desperate than it ever has before, and it's really gone exponential compared to where people's mindset was maybe three or four months ago. Mm -hmm. There is a quote from Albert Bartlett. One of the greatest shortcomings of the human race is its inability to understand the exponential function. I think we're all part bearing witness to nonlinear change. Every day you wake up and something radically new has transpired. That's how quickly it will unravel. If, if we wake up tomorrow morning and 25,000 people have died in Karachi or in Tehran from a heat wave, people will realize that that's going to get better. That's going to get worse quicker everywhere. It will be very, very easy for the whole society to collapse. You know, the whole banking system is a Ponzi scheme that's based on 30-year government bonds. If you can't sell 30-year government bonds because you haven't got 30 years, that's a big, that's a big um, cornerstone of the economic system removed. Things can unravel and will unravel very quickly, in my opinion. Yeah. I think it's hard to, to sort of uh, conceptualize it. I, I, I once had a dream um, that really shaped... Uh, really influenced me when I had it, but it was a it was a dream where I realized in it that that an asteroid is about to hit the planet, and we all knew it. It was just announced on you know the media, the the television, or wherever I heard it in the dream. Um, the mission to save the Earth from an asteroid failed. We have three days left, and so the rest of the dream was me thinking and contemplating and recognizing that not only was you know was I gonna die. But everybody in my life that I knew that was going to die and that everything that human civilization, everything that hum human beings have ever created um, and all the life on this planet would disappear as a result of this asteroidal impact. And I had this, this dream where I, I delved into the emotions of that feeling. And towards the end of the dream, I experienced the impact. And, you know, I, it was a very strange dream because at the very end, I continued dreaming after I died, which was really surreal. Um but the point of it is that I, I think when you start to contemplate, and I've been contemplating this, this scenario we're discussing, this predicament we are, we are in for years, and when you had time to, if you've been lucky enough, I would say, like if we've had enough time to contemplate it, what I'm worried about are the people that don't know jack shit about any of these things. That either, one, if they know anything about it, they may be in denial, or they may be what they call themselves as skeptics, or, deni or what we call them as denialists. And I know people like that in my life. But as these things happen, and as it, re as it really hits the fan, how are those people going to react? And what duty do we have, as people who know about this subject, to, you know, tell them and to try to bring up the subject when they don't want to hear it? And I think that as, again, as things get weirder, as things get more dire, I'm, I'm worried about the people around me that don't know anything about it or don't want to know anything about it. I think you have to accept, I think one thing that's hard is we have to accept that one of the flaws in the human species is, and, and what's kind of brought us to the situation that we are in today is part of the reason is we are so welded to systems, ideologies, and um, institutions that have been going on for generations well before e any of us were born. And when we hear that some of these systems, these institutions um, have flaws and there's some horrors that involve these institutions and systems, we get in denial because we're so comfortable with it. We're so we so weld ourselves to it that we try to justify it. And I see it, a, a small example would be, um, you know, these, these priests in Pennsylvania that molested a thousand children. And it has been going on since the 1940s. They were raping them and sexually abusing these children, making them say confessions while they were doing it. Oh, Jesus. And if, if I were to tell you there's, a, there's an institution out there that has a history of child rape and abuse, that promotes patriarchy and white supremacy. A lot of people would say, 
let's get rid of that that institution right now. We got to take it down. And then if I said, well, what if I were to tell you that's the Catholic Church? A lot of people would be in denial and try and 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 brush that away. And that's what a lot of humans, a lot of us, that's what we do as as humans. And we and this is just a larger scale of it. And that's why it makes it such a difficult conversation to have sometimes. And, and and also, I think you have to know when to walk away from that conversation. Say, look, I did what I could. I, I, I told this person I care about them deeply and I told them, but they're just they're not they're not going to, you know, engage in this. And you got you just got to walk away from it. Mm hmm. Yeah, I guess it's not our responsibility to convert people. Like we're some kind of weird religious doom cult trying to convince people that we're all fucked. You know, that's not necessarily our responsibility and that's not what we should be trying to uh, uh, portray, I think, in our in our work or activism or conversations or whatever. You know, um, I think that I've, I know that, I know like, for instance, Guy McPherson has been accused of running some kind of doom cult you know, and I think that <laughs> when we start talking about this subject to people, they they may assume the worst of us by even bringing up the subject. Um, it's a weird balance to play. I guess you just have to try to do it with those that you love, right? Those that you trust, that trust you, and um, speak honestly and frankly with them as you would with anybody you loved and were friends with. And you got to be delicate about it too, I think. And you know, one thing that I've said on my radio show that I would say to here is that I just, my goal is, you know, I look at someone's ideology as a recipe, right? And I just want to get into that person's recipe, whether it's a teaspoon or whether it's a full cup, I don't care. I want in there. And if I can just convince somebody one little thing is bullshit, then maybe I can lead them to the greater thinkers. Like that's the way I try to look at it. Like I'm trying to be a front person. So that way I can lead them to Kevin Hester. I can lead them to Guy McPherson, Derek Jensen, some of the other people that I admire and really look at, Dar Jamal. I mean, that's what we can try to do. And and know your opportunity when you see it and be delicate about it. That would be my advice. I mean one thing I've said to people, someone will say, you know, they'll bring up climate change and yeah, you know, it's really getting warmer. And I'll say to them this, and this seems to engage people, I'll say, and a lot of people think we're already past the tipping point, that we've crossed the point of no return. And then it's, oh, really? Well, then they want to know more. You know, you can't just say, and we're going to, you know, we're going to go extinct in five years. Like <laughs> after that, people will look at you and be like, well, what the hell are you like? You're crazy. You've got to lead them into where things are going step by step and, and piecemeal it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good, that's good. I agree with you. Definitely. My role in doing that is coming to an end. One of the reasons why I wanted to have this conversation is because we were going to talk about uh, having children in this time. Cause I think it's, if, if no one's prepared to kick off that conversation, we should at least do that. But I'm really coming to the end of my run about uh, doing this sort of work because the evidence is clear. It's staring us in the face. Anyone who's paying attention and can't see it is for some reason in denial. And I'm not interested in arguing with people. I'm not interested in any of that negativity. I'm prepared to just lay out my position. That's what I think. Like it or lump it, I'm not forcing it down anyone's throat. 